I'm really glad we got a chance to talk like this. It's important to establish a sense of trust in the workplace. Wouldn't you agree, Jane? Oh, yeah, totally. You know, it's My door's so always open. Global Television presents. Who, who are you? You're not, uh, you should be wearing a security tag. Yeah, no, she's I'm not talking to you, says a hand. Nick, this is Jane, my best friend in the whole world and the newest addition to the Spirits family. Hi. Nick Walton, CSR. CSR? It's a pretentious way of saying customer sales rep. Shut it! Wow! A special preview of the new comedy series, The Jane Show. <laughs> We'll take you behind the scenes for a look at the making of the show and give you a sneak peek into its premiere season. Jane! Jane! Hey, Jane! Miss Black. Jane Black is an aspiring writer who has spent the last 10 years struggling to make it, and um, she finally decides to throw in the towel and join the real 9 to 5 world. I just got a job. <laughs> you know that things get better. You know that things are right. originated about seven years ago. Actually, when I was at Second City, I, I had started thinking about doing this character based on all the women that I saw riding the subway to work, or they'd be coming home from work when I'd be going to work, because I worked at night. And they would be sitting on the subway with their power suits and the running shoes and socks and reading their novels. And um, I started to wonder what their lives were like. And I started to think, if I hadn't gone into performing, would that have been me? My new home away from home. It's perfect. Desks, phones, walls. So officey. Prints, scans, faxes, copies, 35 pages per minute, 1200 DPI, five input trays. This, the bloody stealth bomber of copiers, boys. So, 53 cases of Cabernet Sauvignon for Monday. Jane now works at Spirits Brobridge. Oh, God. I can't drink red wine like I used to. Red wine, Saturday, Jane. Vodka tonics, Thursday. No hangover. How could you not know that? <laughs> she basically finds herself surrounded by all these people that um, are supposed to be normal. You've lipstick on your teeth. Oh, God. And then she gets there, and it's kind of like, don't look at me. You're all a bit odd. OK, so that's mine. What is The mug, one with the big N on it. You really want to stand your ground and spit in the face of the inevitable. Ten years ago, a customer warned me that if I didn't find him a bottle of 52 Shivas, I might get chlamydia. And you ended up with chlamydia? The one that you used this morning, and the one I think you're about to use again to sling back another cup of Java. It's tea, actually. Is it? Well... I play Susan, who's Jane's old best friend. They grew up together. What are you, in grade eight? Someone steal your baseball? No. Thanks. Talk later. So, you're the writer. Yeah. You gotta come to book club. We're reading Adrian's Dream. It's about the Holocaust. Isn't Shelly awesome? <laughs> Susan is one of those girls who always sort of has a plan of how her life should go and how things should be. Jane, this is Thursday night. Thursday night drinks. Thursday night, the night where it all begins, drinks. <sighs> with guys, Jane. Guys with jobs and futures. Jamie's friends from Ultimate. Ultimate? Ultimate Frisbee. I disagree. I'm not really into that. The irony of Jane giving up her, her writing career is that being in that office brings out all the things that I think make her ultimately a good writer. Seeing the real side of people, interpreting people, having this very full fantasy life that she has because of repressing all the, you know, creative juices, it just pops out. I have arrived. Uh-huh, this is my desk. All the office girls, stop your feet like this. Been around the block, been thrown around. Wrote me a book and now I'm kicking it down. I ain't no writer's like girl. I ain't no writer's like girl. This is no. my desk, is my desk, is my desk. You're on my desk. Oh. It's an impressive resume. Oh, thank you. There's just one problem with it. What, what would that be? Stops in 1998. It does. Eight years? 
That's quite a gap. It is a gap. Stella is one of those people that wants the world to be, to function in a certain kind of way. At high energy, at high sense of accomplishment, and with, with goals in place, and people fitting into the kind of categories that they're meant to fit into. I expect to see everyone's name on the sign-up sheet at day's end. Any questions? Uh, Good. I have a question. Why do we have to sign up for a mandatory function? <laughs> She gets out there and she, she wins because there are no options. There's no room for failure. And there's no room for failure in anyone else's life as well, which makes her a bit tough to deal with. Hey, boys. <laughs> She's with me. Roger, you're looking good. Steve, you survived another year. And Mike, those hair plugs didn't take frickin' tragedy. I threw a party once. I spent all day stuffing mushroom caps for the ungrateful bastards. And then I ended up with a hangover and a slave named Terrence. Stella for Jane represents, you know, the ghost of Christmas future. Stella was just giving us an extremely fascinating lecture on Niagara wines. Really? Sounds interesting. I like your enthusiasm, Jane. I was enthusiastic. You're coming with me uh, to a tasting. I'll pick you up tomorrow at 6. A.M.? Meeting adjourned. The potential in, in Jane is fabulous, and Stella sees it all the minute that girl walks in. She's, um, she's raw clay waiting to be molded into Stella. <laughs> I picked you up a latte and a fat-free breakfast cookie. Really? looking for a place to empty my colostomy bag. You are disgusting. This is uh, Iggy. This is Andrew. Andrew Misle. Nice to meet you. I'm Iggy. I Andrew played the, the uh, can we say? shoot disturber. Yeah. Of the office. He's the poo-poo disturber of the office. Forklift driving? Racing. The fast and the furious. You're both stupid. You put 10 healthy adults in an enclosed space 40 hours a week. Iggy, cease and desist. You said the Carrie and Jane are going in the warehouse. Carrie and Jane. Absurd. The last guy Jane worked with ended up dead. She killed him. Killed him? Yeah. No. Yeah. Apparently, they had an intense working relationship in and out of the office. Out of the office, huh? <laughs> Jane really loves Carrie. I think from the minute she meets him, she just falls in love with him because he's just so honest and pure in this kind of rough world. Actually, Carrie, I'm gonna do another. A little something I've been working on all week. Chilliwax, my girl. Gone, gone, gone. I was doing Chilliwack. This is not right. Carrie O'Neill is uh, a former broker who uh, did very well in the stock market but uh, fell on some rough times and uh, things kind of went poorly for him, uh, at which point I think uh, he was looking for a little bit of help. And um, he came to uh, Stella, who runs uh, Spirits, and uh, asked her if maybe he could uh, use her resources to keep him alive. <clears throat> uh, my email crashed. Can I take a personal day? No. Other people talk to Carrie as though uh, he didn't exist. Icky, would you mind if I... No. So when uh, Jane comes in, um, she's actually much uh, more honest. Take a look. Nice balls. This year I'm ready. I took lessons, got my own balls, heavy grip glove, microfiber hand towel. Wow, sounds serious. I'm only telling you this, Jane, because I think eventually I'm going to come to respect you. Thank you, Carrie. 